Hi students and welcome to preliminary chemistry and the start of topic number three which is the water topic. In this particular video we're going to look at water as a solvent. So there's three key terms that we need to be aware of here. The first is a solute. Now a solute is a substance which will dissolve in a solvent to produce a solution. One of the problems we're trying to define these three terms is that we tend to use each of these terms to describe each of the others. The important thing about the solute is that it's the um, substance which is in the smaller amount and there can be more than one solute. The solvent is the substance which can dissolve the solute to form the solution and the solution itself is a homogeneous mixture of one or more solutes dissolved in a solvent. Now we can describe the ocean, for example, as a solution, but it has more than one substance or one solute dissolved in it. And of course, the solvent for the ocean would be water. Water itself is an excellent solvent, and it's what we're going to focus on in this particular video. So water is regarded as the universal solvent. Now that doesn't mean that it dissolves all substances, but it's a very common solvent for a very large number of solutes, and particularly um, a lot of the ionic salts, so those that can be split up into cations, which we know are positive ions, and anions, which are negative ions, and also for some generally small polar covalent molecules. Now this is an exclusive to small polar, polar covalent molecules because we also know that in our bodies, there's a very large amount of water and there may well be some reasonably large size uh, organic molecules uh, dissolved in the water, but then there'll be a number that are not as well. If you walk around your home, you'll find a very large number of solutions where water is the solvent. And this is everything from cleaners like floor cleaners, liquid soaps, um, to soft drinks, medicines, um, virtually any bottle of liquid that's in your um, uh, fridge or pantry. Now not everything dissolves, so sometimes they form other types of mixtures, uh, suspensions for example, or colloids, um, but a very large number of the substances that we have around our home are solutions of a solute or more than one solute in water. Our own bodies contain a very large number of examples of solutions as well. Um, gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide are dissolved in the blood. Uh, we have certain salts that are dissolved in water to form urine. Um, in plants, um, the water in the xylem also often contains salts which are going to be transported from the roots uh, up to the leaves and, uh, and throughout the plant. And also things like stomach acid and, as I mentioned before, the oceans themselves. All of these are examples of different types of solutions where water is acting as the solvent. So why is water so good at being a solvent? Well, there's a couple of important reasons, and the main one relates to the fact that water is a polar molecule. And this is, this is going to be very important as we continue to um, look at, how water, at water's properties and how it interacts with different substances. The main thing that we need to be aware of is that the water molecule is a combination of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen. And each of these is held together by a covalent bond. Now the covalent bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen is not an equal bond in the sense that the electrons that are uh, used to be shared in the creation of this bond are held slightly more tightly by the oxygen than they are by the hydrogen. And as a consequence of that, the oxygen itself becomes slightly negative. Each individual hydrogen becomes slightly positive, and therefore we have a polar bond. So therefore, in water, we would actually have two polar bonds. This one is also a polar bond. As a consequence of that, if I just change the color for a second here, I can put a little line through my molecule and I can find there's a region here which is positive and a region here which is negative. As a consequence, this is a polar molecule. It's created a dipole, a negative region and a positive region. 
And this polarity allows water to not only attract other charged particles, such as um, the anions and cations in salts, but also other polar molecules. Because one of the important rules that we need to remember is in solutions, like dissolves like. What that means is one polar substance will dissolve in another polar substance, and that's going to be important later on. So how do we explain how sodium chloride dissolves in water? Well, very simply, the water molecules have a polarity. This is the positive region, so they will be attracted to the negative chloride ions, and therefore will orient themselves in such a way as to um, surround an individual chloride ion. The, the sodiums, of course, will be attracted to the negative region of the oxygen. And therefore, if we sort of do a very quick diagram like this, you'll find that the water molecules can move around because they're in a liquid and they can orient themselves any way they like so that their negative regions are attracting the positive regions. Of course, if we have a number of ions in like a crystal structure, where we have alternating sodiums, chlorines, sodiums, and chlorines like this, then each of the water molecules will orient themselves in such a way as to break off or attract those particular ions um, that are opposite to them. As we know, opposites attract. So the important thing to remember about solutions is that like dissolves like if there are charges, if there's a charge separation or a polarity, which we looked at in water, then that means that there's a positive region that can attract negatively charged particles, um, which are components of molecules or individual ions, and a negative region which will attract the positives. Thanks for watching.